G'day YouTube and welcome back to the channel. One of my subscribers was having issues printing TPU on their Corality K1 Max, so I thought I'd go over my settings. I just have the default settings on the TPU right now, and I'm going to be printing a extended butt stock. One of my friends who does um, foam dart guns or Nerf guns, and so let's have a look at the settings that I have. If you have a look over here, I'm doing 230 degrees, 60 degrees on the bed plate and 110 flow. These are the standard settings for a TPU. So let's go ahead and slice this. And of course, um, wait a second, my quality here. Uh, as you can see, these are my percentages for my quality. So let me go ahead and slice this and let's see how we go with the print. So this is the brand of TPU that I will be using um, during this TPU test. I bought it from Amazon, I believe, about a year ago. I've done nothing with it. I haven't put it in a dryer, and it seems to print really well. I only use it from time to time, as I print very rarely with TPU. So just starting the TPU print, as you can see, the flow test is running perfectly. TPU is sticking nicely to the smooth PEI bed plate. Just a quick update on the continued print. Um, the most important thing with this, with the TPU for me, is just make sure you get your uh, bed plate balanced and you've done all your calibration tests. Even though you're doing using TPU, um, you have to do all your calibration tests before you use any filament. If you're not doing that, you will always have issues with it. Even with just regular PLA from a different brand. You've never used the filament. Spend, spend the three, four hours um, calibrating that filament and you'll have a success after that every time. Okay, we just finished the print of the TPU and as you can see it printed pretty good. But the one issue that we will have at this particular point is TPU loves to stick and I've put nothing on this uh, smooth PEI bed to help it come off. But the only thing you need to do is come down to your control panel, hit on your bed plate, turn it up to 85 degrees. And once it reaches 85 degrees, this will pull straight off. Just a quick tip for any of you printing uh, with your TPU. Okay, we're just about at the uh, 85 degrees. At some point, and you can keep increasing this five degrees of time depending on your, your, um, your build surface. But once you heat it up to the melting point, depending on your brand of TPU, it just takes a little bit I'm sorry <laughs> it's not easy but <laughs> and it comes off and leaves no marks on the bed plate isn't that amazing <laughs> i thought so when i first found out okay then um here is our finished part printed out tpu i did print it with 15 percent and um two walls um, if you want a softer part, I found when you, I print my parts, if I just have one wall and about 10%, they're actually a lot squishier. This is still pretty firm, um, but it is quite flexible um, anyway. So it really depends on your usage of it. Um, the main reason I use Creality Print when I use uh, TPU is because Orca Slicer doesn't have a profile for TPU yet. And when this prints TPU, even though it still shows 300 millimeters uh, per second, it slows it right down. It seems to be a lot slower than that. So um, when I tried using Orca Slicer, the TPU print failed. Um, so the only um, slicer I use when I'm printing TPU is the Creality print because it works just fine. And the quality is... Uh, is fine for the uses that I use it for. 
Um, so like, subscribe, and uh, please leave a comment. Thanks again, YouTube.